Hi, this is a sort of an ad addendum video to my last one. I'll, I'll put the information in the blurb. It's essentially to explain more clearly the workflow of producing a compositional image because I sort of refined it as well to try and make it a little bit simpler and easier to understand. So that's the full width of it there. There's, uh, you can add these modules. These modules you can put as many of these in as you want. So I've made them into a single module and so you can you can see how they join up. You can stack them together or miss one out or whatever you want really. And I'll go through here just exactly what you do. So the first layer is your is your background layer, which is pretty obvious really. You have a colour correct to adjust its colour. You have uh, an image resize to make it the size of your eventual composition and to make it the size that the other images will drop onto. The, the aim is going to be to drop images onto here to be used for image to image so you can build your composition out of bits and pieces. So we'll choose a, uh, a foreground for this maybe or we'll, we'll, cho we'll choose um, some mountains to go into this one maybe. So here's our mountains. Um, so in this, I'll explain it in this square, you, you have, here's your mountains come in and as you see, so you've got several options. You can resize them to drop perfectly in here, but you need to resize the mask also. So, you, because this is a PNG image, so you see it has a mask on it. Or you can click resize source and make it true. And that's the easiest way of doing it. To, and as you see now, those mountains are dropped into that sky. However, if you want to um, make it uh, squash it vertically, you can, move, you can move it up and down. But um, so we move it down. So we moved it down. Do you see the move, mountains have moved down there? But if you want to squash it, change its shape, then you need to resize both the mask and the... Um, and the image itself. So I'll demonstrate that now. We'll put that back to zero. And this counts from the top left always. Always counts it. So we'll put that to false. So what I want to do is we'll change this to resize and we'll change, this is the mask by the way. So this is the mask we're resizing here. And the image as well. So that, and they both need to be the same. Otherwise the mask won't fit anymore. So our resize width, we'll make it the same as our composition over here, 2048. And we'll make the same here, so the numbers have to be the same. But if we want to squash our mountains vertically, then we can make this smaller. We make this 768. And you have to do both of them. And you have to do both of them the same. So here's our mountains, and they're squashed vertically. And you see they fit perfectly. So we'll move them down. And there's our mountains in. We'll zoom in a bit. So there's our, there's our mountains placed. We might squash them even more. I like squash mountains. We'll squash them to 512. Have to do both, otherwise the mask won't work. And there we are, some very squash mountains. And we are moving down a bit more. And you move them left or right as well. But we're, we'll do deal with that in a moment. So you see you can place your mountains any way you want on a background there. So next we'll put a foreground in maybe. And it's the same process. And as I said before, these uh, units can be just duplicated. So choose file to upload. And we'll put a foreground in. So here we are. Uh, there's our, our foreground dropped in. So we've got sky, mountains and foreground. So we need to make this the right size. So we change this to resize. To resize. Change that to 2048. So here's our foreground in. You can go a bit confusing with the numbers, but there you go. There you go. So we've got a foreground, mountains, the background, and sky. So the next, and if we want this um, the other way around, uh, if we if we put the image flip in, uh, it'll reverse this the other way around. So you see the image flip here. It's not connected, but if I was to put it into the chain then the image would flip across. Again, you need to do both the mask. It's a bit tedious, so you have to do both the mask and the thing. So uh, we'll try and stick a car on the road. So it's the same game. We'll choose a file to upload. 
which is fine. We don't want it to flip, so we need to drop that in. And there's our car. It's not on our road yet, but um, I think it needs to be a little bit smaller, say half the size. So we could use rescale. We just change that to 0.5 because I don't want to change the proportion of my car. So our car is, as you see right down there. So what I could do, I can lower my car. So we'll bring the car down by raising the number here. And then we can take it across. It still looks like you're going to drive off the road. Yeah. So you see, we have our car on the road, zipping along. And um, the fact that the road's going the wrong way doesn't really worry me, because I, I think the sampler will sort that out for me. Okay, so that's um, a basic description of how all that works. And as I say, you can cut any of them using the reroutes here. You can cut any of them out of the chain. So if you don't, if you don't need all the layers, you don't have to use them. And I would obviously normally choose a, a better, a better fitting car. However, so I suppose we ought to um, generate something from this. I'll just set that up now. So we're going to set up our final image and we have um, I missed out a section here so we have an overlay at the end and this overlay this is after the uh, layers of uh, objects to make up our composition so what we do is put an overlay of I don't know if you see it going close you see this uh, image has noise in it so we need something to glue all these photographic images together so you know these are all coming from a different world so what this does is just put enough noise in there for to help the sampler pull out an image we hope is worthwhile so and then that gets blended over the top so overlay 50% you can change the amount of overlay and uh, so forth to make this stronger if this is being too restrictive you you can increase the amount of noise over it with that and then i've got an image resize here which takes the image to the size i want to generate it, my initial generation i don't make too large this is again but it's two squares it's the same composition then for style we've got a uh, ip adapter the new ip adapter version 2 which i really like and uh, I, here i'm resizing the image to go into it and the settings here are, are, are very basic. It's style transfer. Um, and it starts at weight 60. And it's going from um, step 1, step 7. I'm using a turbo, so there's only 10 steps. The prompt is just a list of what I want in the picture and the style. This style is apparently retrofuturism. That's nice, isn't it? So we've got sports car, road, lands. This is just a list. Morning light, a bit of stuff about um, how how lovely it all is and um, our, and the keywords for our two and I don't want boats in it for some reason so that's left over from another one that is so the denoise is 60 and here is the result and this is quite a low res so this will go into a refiner to be uh, prettied up afterwards so we'll go um, across to have a look at the input image so there you see and it's corrected our road for us you see the road car is now plausibly on the road rather than uh, rather than probably crashing any minute and uh, I think that's it this is really an addendum to a previous video I'll, I'll put a link to that video and the thing and I'll, I'll, I'll put this workflow in as well and I uh, hope you have fun with it in the previous video there's a description about how to make the PNGs these are PNGs they're made in Photoshop and they have their transparency already in there so you don't have to draw a mask. The mask is already there. And that's it. A short video, I hope. Thank you.